we went on a major label, made lead sales. We were viewed as sellouts to many people. Um, and agree, disagree. I'm not going to say how I feel about it, but you know, we went that road and that burned a lot of people to when you really love a band and like they put out a record that's so stylistically different, it's a fucking betrayal. It's like they cheated on you. Hey, it's me, Jesse Lee. I almost posted this week's episode without one of these little intros, and like you would have just been left to your own devices. You would have had to read the description to know what was going on. But don't worry, I remember to record it, so here I am. Uh, this week on the show, we have Alex Vercoxis, the former lead singer from Atreyu, and he has a new project called Dead Icarus. Don't worry, we don't spend the entire interview talking about Atreyu or that comment that he made about Metalcore. We definitely touch on it, though, because I know that's what you grubby little listeners want to hear. Uh, but yeah, we talk about, like I said, his new project and talk about his evolution as a singer and some of the run-ins he had, he's had in the past with people from the scene and I don't know, a lot of other fun stuff. So let me know what you think of it. Uh, please, please, I don't have a Patreon. I don't have any way to take money from you, you know? <laughs> no, like really though, I've never asked anybody for a single dollar for my content. Not that I have any problems with people that do that, but I'm just saying I don't. If you want to help me though, if you really want to support me, please share this episode with your friend. If you dig it, you know, send him a DM, maybe send a D pick along with it, whatever you got to do. Um, or, you know, just even if you can just subscribe or follow, hit a follow button, wherever you're listening to this at, whatever platform you're listening to this on, if there's a spot for you to subscribe or just find more from me, please, please do it. All right. I'm done with my sales pitch. Hope you dig it. I like to uh, start these off, you know, with a Real divisive question, really divide fans right off the bat, you know? That's oh, a good idea. So, yeah, yeah, really rile people up in the comments. Um, all right, crunchy peanut butter or creamy peanut butter? What are you going with? <sighs> okay, well, this is kind of a, a, a privileged answer, I guess. But <laughs> I, like, I like creamy if it's like not like a processed brand like Jiffy. Oh, for sure. Like that. Because it, it's kind of just naturally chunky anyway in the creamy. Yeah. But if it were to just pick like one, I would go crunchy. I would go crunchy okay, unless okay. it's like my normal peanut butter though is like this Valencia, beautiful Valencia peanut butter from Trader Joe's. <laughs> and it's like, it's got a little texture to it. So I like a little texture in my nuts. I feel you. <laughs> that, that's a clip right there. Texture to his nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, gonna be the, that's going to be the clickbait for this one. I yeah, yeah. Texture to my nuts. No, I feel you. Yeah, some of those, like some peanut butter is so overloaded with sugar, it just ends up being candy at one point. Like, it's just so sweet. Yeah, weird. some of it messes with my guts, too. Like, I'll, oh, I'll really? burp it up for like a day and a half after it. But like, Valencia peanut butter, uh, you know, doesn't mess with it as much. It's a way they, I'll have to check that way, out. The way they're growing those peanuts. <laughs> yeah i'm a uh, i'm a natural gif guy myself you know just to keep it classic but yeah the crunchy one the crunchy peanut butter is good but it can definitely tear up the bread a little bit too much so sometimes you, you gotta switch out around of control you know <laughs> a little too crunchy all right man so i don't want to be around the bush too much because i i know you're probably sick to death talking about it but everyone listening and watching is going to want to know this answer so i'm just going to get out of the way real quick here what happened with the Treyu? How did the whole thing kind of come to an end? What was like the real reason why it kind of just you made the exit? Okay, well, I'm glad that you put it this way. You said you said made the exit. So I want to bring up that as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I have only ever said, uh, the band and I parted ways. And I know mm. that seems a little or very like murky. To most people and then everybody kind of wants to know like like oh the like the details of everything and i'm old school and that's the man shit and that's between yeah. me and the guys that's not between you and me and everybody to like speculate on you know i looked at i was in the band i was out of the band actually in april of 2020 uh mm. and then it wasn't announced till uh like september october till like lamb goat did some stuff i i you know it's right. a blur there was a lot going on for me with that obviously and then some some other things but yeah, man, it's it's a tricky a tricky question to fully answer. I think the nicest way to put it is we have creative and some one or two personal differences with each other, and that's why I'm okay. in the band anymore. Um, you know, 
I didn't leave a tray. You, I see that. I see that places. I can say that I did not leave a tray. I've never made that right. statement. Some people have made that statement, or it's been like alluded to. It's made to feel that way. Like I've had people texting me when it went when it went down and finally got announced, and I'm like, "What the what the fuck are you talking about? Like, when did I say that? Who is yeah. the, the words that I left? I don't know. So you know, I didn't leave. Were you blindsided by the situation then? I think that the whole thing was. Oh, look, I oh, man, what's the fucking like righteous way that I can take this instead of like <laughs> I know it's fucking, the shitty <laughs> way, you know? And then they're fucking lawyers, you know. Or yeah. I, believe me, I'm a guy who shoots my mouth off. Uh, <laughs> I'm shooting, and, but but also besides from that, it's like, what good does that give me? The the yeah. tray was very negative for me. It broke my heart. We'll put it that way. Me not being in a tray, you. I mean, I'll I'll try to move through it quick. Nobody likes to hear this sort of stuff. Uh, broke me in half. Made me question who I was in a person. My whole life, for twenty plus years, people called me Alex Trey. I didn't have a last name. That was my last name, because um, because that band was my heart for many years mm -hmm. at the beginning. Um, I, I was the driving force of that shit when we were kids, and then as we got older and we became men and adults, you know, you decide what kind of peanut butter you like. You know, <laughs> right? And I think that I might like one type of peanut butter, and I think the the guys in the tree, respectively or disrespectfully, however you want to take it, like a different type of peanut butter, and that can only work for so long. I saw myself, like, oh, fuck, like I I lost myself in it. I lost myself being in a band, and like I didn't realize that a tree was, oh, fuck, like like not like. I didn't realize fully what it meant to, to everybody or to, to people who really liked it. I didn't even realize what it meant to me. Like when Atreyu was its most successful, we were just kids, you know, or right. the band was 19 to about my mid twenties. It was just like, it's like a constant ascent or a, a climb and it, it feels great, but it's a whirlwind and you're young and you're stupid and you have no depth of character. Um, and then when things started to wane or not be as rad around the time uh, that congregation of the damn record that we, the, the band put out, um, like I was fucking lost. I was, I was so like, what am I doing? You know, this isn't mm -hmm. what, where I want to, first like a crazy thing. So the band like goes on hiatus and kind of comes back. And when it was pitched to me that we would return, it was kind of like, I wasn't going to be doing screaming. It was going to be kind of almost like a return to form. And that first record back was, was, uh, was more aggressive, uh, <laughs> you know, that a tray you made, uh, than, than everything that has happened since. Um, and it didn't get much traction. We were kind of fucking in a weird place as a band. Bands are weird places as as, as humans. And I think that that record not being successful when we came back and being heavier spurred us, spurred the band. And I, and I signed off on everything to go back to Feldman and get back into that world. And just for mm. me personally, and I'm going to go ahead and guess it's the same way for him too. I, mean, I could give two fucks either way. Um, I don't want to work with John Feldman ever again. I, I I look back at that experience as like, man, I'm glad I did it so I could learn some things. And I learned some, I learned some things. I learned good and bad things. And that's what really life comes down to. I trained jujitsu and you learn by pain sometimes, you know, pain's a real good teacher, like constantly getting fucked up in this one position is going to yeah. make you learn how to not to get into this position. And I think that's what working with John was for me. Tons of people warned me about, about where that road would lead me. And it fucking literally, Literally led me exactly there but that's the beautiful part about being human is like just ignoring people going on your fucking journey and learning learning from it and i feel like that's what that's what it, it gave me everything so I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunities i wish i had executed some of them better i've kind of danced around your question now for a while you know what i mean <laughs> you're good man like i, I understand out of it. but yeah yeah like the easy answer is like two different types of peanut butter you hear dead Icarus and you hear like what i'm doing and it's like not everybody really knows about it yet but it's um it it, it i think it kind of shows why i'm not in a tree yeah. there there was never again going to be anything like that and there never again will be in the there's band. a clear divide in like the sound yeah. of, the, of those two bands for sure and and nothing a tray you makes in the future will ever go into that realm again and that's the realm yeah. i want to be in <clears throat> you know what i mean and 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 I think the last few years of Atreyu, and I say this to throw myself under the bus, I was not the best uh, bandmate because I was so unhappy with how minimalized I'd become over the years. Like if you even looked at the music videos, like I wasn't in the music yeah. videos at the end. And I don't really have the type of ego. I definitely have one. Every singer in a band has one. But to be like, I need to be in the video more. But I, definitely I mean, fucking... being in the video, I think it's pretty bare minimum. <laughs> you I mean, know? when you're known as the lead singer of the band, yeah. front man, and you're like kind of minimalized in everything. And it's just kind of like you, 
you gravitate to that. So then I saw my role yeah. being minimalized and I'm just, well, fuck it. Then I'm going to minimalize it even more. And that's not yeah. a way to, to go forward productively. So uh, there was, you know, I guess a breaking point for somebody at some point. And, you know, we, we parted ways, but yeah, man, it was sudden. It was fucked up, dude. When everything happened, my wife is six months pregnant. The government oh, had just hit Jesus. us with all the lockdowns in 2020. I live in California. Yeah. So there was, there was, we got some extra lockdowns. Real extreme. Um, yeah. So I'm isolated from the few friends I have left. And because the band was kind of my world, the industry, like I was, I'm not an industry darling by any stretch of the imagination and not being in a tray. You had definitely does not make me more, lovable to anybody does that make yeah. sense like it, you know you're only as good as what people need you for uh is kind of how i feel sometimes in this 100%. business and uh nobody needs me for stuff right now nobody needed me then so uh you know you become irrelevant i was already irrelevant the band itself was already sl sliding that way in my opinion um and i i i want to do i'm not saying dead acres is relevant stuff but it's it's fucking relevant to me um uh, mm -hmm. especially where we're it's fulfilling free. Yeah, it's fulfilling. And we're seven eighths of the way done writing like our, our first full length now. And it's it's totally fulfilling. It's like a different a different journey, a whole different thing. It's yeah. I'm getting out. I'm getting out what I want of music now. And that makes me able to create in a freer, um, but much more expressive, not impeded way. Good. Well, I'm glad I hear it. I mean, yeah, I do know that's not I mean. That sounds amicable. I, I, I mean, I, I th again, I think you uh, answered that the, the best way you could without, you know, throwing anyone under the bus of the situation. Yeah, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear your word. Kicked out. What's that? Amicable is your word, not mine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you weren't kicked out of the band because you said a tray you invented metalcore. I'm glad that wasn't. No, no, <laughs> no. I knew, I know we're going there too eventually. Um, but yeah, Dude. no, no. When I, when I said that. I won't say the names of me. I don't want to talk about dudes when they're not around, but a member yeah. of that the band texted me and was like, that was genius. That was great. Because it's just fucking clickbait bullshit. That's all society Dude, has become. Yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a fucking moron. Like, I do say stupid things and I shoot my, shoot my mouth off. But, like, people who know me weren't like, oh, whoa, Alex has gone off the deep end because they're like, fuck, Alex. Like, you say stupid shit. Like, that's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Like, um, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or I'll get in trouble, but I, I feel like Phil from All That Remains sent me a text message even. It was like, yeah, that was genius or that was funny or it was it was complimentary. He wasn't like, you fucking dick. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I'll leave you, I'll leave everybody with this to think about in regards to the metalcore thing. Nobody who's successful in life was mad about that comment. Only right. people who aren't fucking killing it or aren't busy trying to kill it, have time to like fucking analyze that and be like weird and lay and, and hold on to it for so many years. Dumb thing to say, I didn't do it. I never thought I did it. It, it was a dumb thing to do it to even like, that's not, there's other ways to be the heel. And when you're not like, I'm already not a, like the industry darling guy and not the media favorite. And I'm trying to play the heel. Like it's not going to work. You know, it's better to just fucking cling to who you are and be who you are. But what went, went through my head was I'm doing that interview is I've done, 700 billion interviews where i'm just like not a normal alex and i say nice normal things and i'm respectful no one fucking cares yeah nobody cares. nobody cares about right. that as soon as go, you say something a little polarizing you got a lot of followers right go go put a post just a feel-good post have it edited all great and everything too about like you should be positive person and take care of each other mm -hmm. when they're down and respect each other you're gonna get a quarter of the likes and engagement that you do when you don't post racier stuff we'll say does that make sense oh yeah Oh yeah, if yeah, the negativity the clicks way more. That's not where I want to go. That's not where I want to no. be. More. I don't want to put myself you. in that situation, you know, because because it was a dumb thing. Uh, everybody thinks it was a dumb thing. However, it might have been entertaining at the time. But a lot of people, like every every single news outlet or whatever, and podcast, yeah. they all picked it up. None of they them all talked to up. me at the time. No one, no one said anything. Oh really? No one reached out to you for me out. No one's like, let's do an interview. Several years later, a guy who runs a podcast, remained nameless, hit me up, and he had some, some suspicious timing if I wanted to come on and talk about that and some other things. And it's like, why would I? Why don't I want to come talk about this four years later? You know what I mean? Like this is this yeah. is. This is like silly shit, you know what I mean? So other than to say like, yeah, it was a dumb thing to say. I said it. I deserve whatever lumps and like lame comments on Lamb Goat that I get for it. And, you know, fuck, like, I, I don't care, I just, you know? I just think it's so silly because like, I mean, I remember when it, when it came out, I wasn't like, oh, Alex is a douche. I thought it was funny. I thought it was like, a, it was just such like a, a silly thing for people to get upset about. And like, I think, I mean, like you said, no one was successful, was really getting mad about it. And oh. it's like, 
rock i mean i love rock and metal music but the rock and metal fan base tends to be a little, so too passionate to a fault sometimes like if you say something <laughs> like that we invented metalcore all of a sudden every metalcore fan is like fuck you how dare you it's well, like who cares if you say it's just who yeah. cares well like, i think i think what doubled down on it was i was a guy who was into some people uh an yeah. influential metalcore band and that to some people helped i don't want to say like like make it mainstream but like like we were on like mtv and shit and like doing stuff yeah you guys are huge that heavy bands like weren't necessarily a lot not a lot of heavy bands had access to and were doing it at that time it was a blessing it was a gift i'm, I'm so happy to have to have been a part of it you know but it wasn't the norm let's let's fucking yeah. fix it you know what i mean like i didn't grow up watching any of the bands like that i liked on tv like like in that capacity yeah. so you know, like we played a role just like all these other awesome bands played a role. You know what I mean? There's no there's no leader to me, honestly. And this has to do with like what who I love is music. I, I, I've always enjoyed Caven. When I was a kid, um, Caven was already putting out metalcore records. Metalcore didn't have a name when I was a young man. Like there, right. was, no, there wasn't metalcore. There was like, like yeah. oh, hardcore does this and metal does this. And Atreyu was like, we'll sing and scream. And, and at the same time as us unrelated to us not influenced by us and we're not influenced by them like poison well and kill switch are happening like a trade mm -hmm. was, was officially founded in 99 but we were playing together before we were little kids in high school doing this there's no internet i'm not hearing this from other places i'm taking shit i like about pantera and make mixing it with shit i like from like like braid which is some emo band mm -hmm. that's going to be lost on a lot of people right now so that that was it. I'm not saying we, we it wasn't like we all these bands are just working independently, vibing. Oh yeah. And then you will hear like Poison the Well. And I remember the first time I heard Poison the Well, I was like, oh fuck. Like this is what I wanted to do, but it's totally not. It's not how yeah. I visualized it all coming together. You know, we're hearing Kill Switch for the first time and be like, oh shit, like I I can we can't even sing like that. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. wasn't the idea, but these guys have the same idea, but it's their interpretation of it. That's fucking rad. And I think music's doing that now again in a way because the gloves are off, shit's a little less gatekeepy, and and things are evolving so fast where like, dude, the new dead Icarus is gonna be like black black metal emo deathcore. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like everything's mixing alt country. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like with country and I don't know, you know, everything's getting mixed together. It's, it's a fucking exciting time for music. Uh, uh, maybe it's just cause I'm turned on again and I'm creating again that it feels that way to me. But I see like what other bands are like, like taking flames, the band that mm -hmm. like they made all these type of records and now they, they've zeroed in on their latest record is, is to me that again, whatever came out like a year ago, but it's fantastic. And it's fantastic because it mixes together all those years of in flames and like honors what they are to the fan in a way like me as a listener hearing that record. That's what I want to hear. So going back to the thing, I think that's why people got so mad when I said that there was a lot of people who like, lo like loved to trade you and were into it. And then we went on a major label made lead sales. We were viewed as sellouts to many people. Um, and agree, disagree. I'm not going to say what, how I feel about it, but w w you know, we went that road and that burned a lot of people to when you really love a band and like they put out a record that's so stylistically different. It's a fucking betrayal. It's like they cheated on you, especially when you're younger, especially when you're in your twenties and you're like fucking putting on makeup and going to shows and you, or oh, whatever, yeah, all you know, matters. putting on your shit. Like this is your life, this is your fucking world and betray you like the biggest band in your life or whatever, you know, betrayed you. And I know what that's like. As a kid growing up, like I like I loved Rancid, and Rancid made a, a fucking Life Won't Wait record, and I was mm -hmm. like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, there's all this reggae and bullshit on it, and it's it. Now I listen to it and I love it. It's one of my most favorite records stylistically. It sounds all. It's a very cool record if you like Rancid, of course. Um, right. But I hated it when it first came out as a kid. <laughs> so if I was a guy, I would have hated Let's Sales Paper Anchor, and I think that led to like a lot of people's pent up shit where they're like. Ah, you now you son of a bitch i waited fucking yeah. 10 years for my <laughs> pitchfork for you to fucking say this bullshit oh yeah yeah that's cool man <laughs> you know i deserve it like if right that, if that's how you get off but yeah like I, I say stupid things i'm involved in stuff you know you you be around long enough like this is one of the dead icker songs is about this uh it's like save your saint sinner or thief uh you live long enough you die one of these if you're around long enough like in the public eye the public will pick which one of these they will make you and then they will be one of those things whether you're really that oh yeah whether what's really inside of you or not it does it's irrelevant it matters who's controlling the narrative and what people want to believe so do you feel like now with the, yeah nice cap at the end <laughs> uh 
do you feel like now when you're, like, you're doing these interviews and doing press, do you feel like you have to like walk in eggshells almost when you're, cause you, like, you oh, yeah. don't want to be like that clickbait again anymore? Yeah. Yeah. If I want to make myself clickbait, I, I want to be on purpose and I want it to be about something yeah. that's not going to create legal trouble for my family. The, that's the hard and true yeah. you know what i mean certain things i say or could say have legal ramifications you know what i mean um or or they don't but they could and it can turn into this huge dramatic negative and it's like man if you just don't like put negative out it's a lot harder for negative to find you you know what i mean so I you agree. know i guess i just can't be clickbait if there's something like super polarizing you ask me like i'll give you an honest answer as honest as i can you know what i mean um i'm not a, i'm not afraid of that kind of shit but you know, am I going to be disgenuine to myself to get there? No, I won't. Like, I won't like. Right. You're not just going to say shit just to say it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a super political guy. Like I am. I have a lot of views, but I don't go online. Yeah. Personally. It'd be like the equivalent of me all of a sudden doing that. It's like this. You were never like this. And now you're just like this to like rock the boat. If I, I just got to be, I got to be me and be true to myself. Now I felt like the felt, I felt like I, I felt maybe I, I spent the last few years in a trade, not being able to be as honest about how, not happy I was with how everything yeah. was because you don't want to rock the boat. You're in a band with what you think are your best friends. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and then maybe you start rocking the boat the wrong way or you wait too long. Ugh, it's the journey. It's life. It's taking yeah. a year. I would have never made uh, Dead Icarus. I would have never met Gabe and worked with with Gabe uh, from Enterprise Earth, who's my my writing partner and all this. I never it didn't show you. I never wanted to sing <laughs> at all. Even to, to like the end and stuff, that's all forced. Like I don't want to do that. Becoming the bull, I just wanted to scream in a trailer. Really? I'm in the band with, and I can say nice things. Well, I'm going to say nice things. <laughs> Brandon, surprise, surprise. Yeah. Oh, this is going to surprise you all. Is a lot stronger singer than me. So he does all, mm -hmm. all the singing parts. So why do we need then? Because I love this dynamic, the flowing dynamic yeah. back and forth and the juxtaposition. Why do we need another guy doing singing? Especially when it's like, you know, if I was the only guy singing, cool. But right. I'm singing with this thing that's much like more capable uh, and enjoyable to a lot of people. It's like, why the f why am I going to do that? So I never, if all these wheels and all these things hadn't fallen into place, I would have never pushed myself to develop more and grow because I didn't. I never had to practice screaming. I very rarely lost my voice. Only if I got sick, I know how to scream. I've done it for so long. I get warmed up and then I can do it. If I'm laid off for a while, it's a it's a little bit of a bitch, and I have to warm up. I have to build muscles back. But once I build muscles back, like it's innate. It's something I can easily do. And then singing, I've just like, I've reapproached how I do everything in my head about vocals. I don't think about singing or notes anymore. I just think about a performance and in the performance, there's notes, but I'm using my whole body and my mind and the emotions to get to that performance. So even mm -hmm. I, like when I record my demos and stuff, like it'd be funny to record, like I get vibey and like I'm moving and I'm doing stuff, whatever the song yeah. is, because when I let that out of me and experiment, like I, I can, I can hear all these other voices and try these other things. And so like on Dead Icarus, I'm already using more voices than just a scream. There's there's so many different things I'm trying to do. And then on this record, there's more like there, there's falsetto. Like I'm chanting like a fucking monk at parts. Um, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> ripping screams. I don't want him to be like, oh, here yeah. we go. He's not going to do this. There's ripping. I'm trying to. I wanted to get like a good death metal almost scream, but without sounding like super blown out. You know what I mean? Some death metal vocalists. Um, sound kind of fucking blown out like there's something torn flat yeah. down to me and, and and some don't and I really like that more of like a tight focused lower sound so I, I'm not doing like deathcore growls or anything like that like I leave that to like Slaughter Prevail or in a show those dudes <laughs> those dudes are untouchable that's like why do I need to go fuck with that like they're already fucking with that they're killing that you game. got your own lane yeah yeah I, have you ever had any vocal injuries um no when when we were on tour for like lead sales or something like that it was a pretty vigorous campaign like we're on the road all the time and i got some i, I kept getting sick so i was taking afrin the nose spray and the, oh yeah that's like stuff. A, yeah and then i got i got not addicted but i got like a a condition from the name mm -hmm. that the, the, the has an actual name this was years ago and so they took me to some like doctor in a in la and they put cameras up my nose and down my throat and all this and it, it was just like destroyed from overuse and i got shots of cortisone mm -hmm. up my nose which was kind of gnarly and weird and then Jeez. throw a cortisone in the butt because evidently you always got it in the butt um yeah so why not right uh so i've never, no, I I mean, never had the best any... place for everything right yeah, <laughs> the butt is always a good spot um so i never i never have had like a crazy like blowout uh, injury because i always i try to be careful with it but there's yeah. 
there's times when it's it's not as powerful you know what i mean you're on you've been out for three or four weeks like the whatever was like a tray use fuck I, can, I don't know like the 20 years of being in a band i don't know some tour and mm. we were playing the longest set ever it's like an hour and a half an hour and a half for me is not an hour and a half of your normal singer like it's just not right i'm running around a lot and besides that the screaming like most dudes screaming, carrying an hour and a half set, like that's gnarly, exclusively screaming. You know, I, mm-hmm. I feel for for my dudes in bands who are out there doing it. Maybe there's guys who are, who are like, pussy, I'm doing an hour and a half every night. It's great. It's like, you know, good for you. That's got to be um, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Doing five nights and an hour and a half mm-hmm. is, is is hard, you know? And I then, but then I see like, uh, what is it? I think uh, Gabe is going on tour with Enterprise Earth uh, with like suffocation or something in Europe. And they're playing like every night. Yeah. And, and, and suffocations like that. I mean, they got a couple years on me and they're rocking every night. So, you know, it's That's all about crazy. what you can take and what works for your voice. And for me, like, you know, an hour and a half, five to seven nights a week is a little bit much, you know, um, and when I'm not taking care of it as well. I think now when I go back yeah. to things, I got to preserve it more um i because i approach everything differently now i approach how i handle my vocals differently like just even how i write them um and conceptualize my parts and songs so yeah i, I kind of take my i guess i could take my instrument a little bit more seriously now because i because i had to but none of that would have happened if i could, hadn't had this like apex moment in my life where everything exploded mm-hmm. and fucking was torn asunder and i had to pick up and when i picked up i'm like man i need to if I'm going to come back and be in a band, I need to handle shit. It can't just be like, I'm going to come in and I'm going to, I'm going to do one type of scream for a full record. And I want this right. to be dynamic. I want this to be a real, I want this to be memorable and fucking awesome, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think the new stuff definitely shows that because there was, there was a lot of unexpected vocal melodies and the, the new stuff that, yeah, when I hear, you know, your name, I, I, I have a certain sound in my head you're, it's a scream, you know, and stuff. So to hear yeah. like, the new way you're singing and like the new way you're approaching songwriting is really cool. I think one thing that I, you know, maybe someone else will see this differently, but I think the proof's in the pudding, a lot of the catchiness and a lot of the, the hooks in a tray you, they were written by me. And then Mm -hmm. I brought them to the band and Brandon sang them better period. Like suicide notes. Yeah. death, Death grip on yesterday, the curse including Led Cell's Paper Anchor, and even even up until, like, I wrote stuff on Baptize. You know what I mean? Um, which I'm not... Uh, not happy Not credited for? for? Not, oh, no, I did. I did get credit for it, but I'm not saying... Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not stoked on that. Baptize wasn't a direction. Yeah. I was super interested. There's tons of co, co-writers coming in every day. Mm. Uh, that, that's not for me. I feel like a band, like, it should, it should really come from us, the sound. Yeah. And if not, like, I don't know... Uh, that's not that's well it, not i like it it is funny too like like kind of how you mentioned earlier too is like john fellman's like you know getting these opportunities to work with like these huge producers or huge artists like a lot of people might say like oh my god you got to work with this platinum producer or you got to work with this like platinum artist or whatever it's like yeah just, like, just because they did great amazing things doesn't mean they're the best person for you to be working with and writing with and a lot of people don't kind of take that no. into context and no and i don't think sometimes dudes and bands take it into context i think yeah. that, i think they need that person i will i will point out that a train yeah. has a gold record with john feldman and a gold record without john feldman right so john feldman is not the mitigating factor to the gold record i don't mm-hmm. know who is but <laughs> i know it's not him does he play this right. role and stuff? Yes. I, that guy is 100%. Like, I don't mean to go down this wormhole. Like, I'm not trying to shash John, but like, John, no, you're good. Right? John wants to write hits. I don't think I'm saying yeah. anything. Nobody, you go to him, you want to write hits. You want to do a certain type of thing. Like, you want to write mainstream hits. You're not yeah. going there, you know, uh, Metallica is not going to him to write metal songs. He doesn't know what to do with that. Like, I've seen it. I've been a part of that. Like, he doesn't know how to handle riffs. That's not his thing. It's choruses. It's pop hooks. It's mm-hmm. melody. It's that. It's all the stuff like, I'm glad I learned how to do it. I'm glad I learned how to function in that world, but it's not the world. It's not the world for me. And respectfully, I don't think that that world or that, or he, like, I don't think he's dying to work with me again either. And that's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's. You're it's the one my, that got away from him, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, dude, it's crazy. It's like, I had other people in bands. Like, like I, I won't say, like, I don't want to throw people on this, but a buddy of mine <laughs> band who I respect, I've known for many years, we came up with and toured, has worked with him yeah. as well. And went through, like, warned me about all these things that later, like, later happened. And I got mad at him when it happened. 
and we had like a mm. little argument about it and i was like i oh, told oh, you oh, so oh, thing oh, 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 watch what you're saying and then you know things happen yeah but, but it's all the journey it's all such a learning yeah. experience you learn you learn where to put trust in people and then where you failed as a person too i don't want any of this to come off like i'm like all these other people are the reasons and things i am the master of my own destiny i am no mm -hmm. one forces me to say or do anything you know my emotions get the best of me and i get and say and do things but I, everything falls on me. The buck should always end with you. It doesn't end with anybody else. If I, I run a business, it's at me being me. And if I'm fucking, if things aren't going right, it's my fault. The business, mm -hmm. me, not not you. You know, because like you had me on the show and I said some horrible shit and I got in trouble. You didn't <laughs> put a gun to my kid's head, and I still would have right. a choice then too, right? There's always a choice. Right. There's consequences for our actions. Yeah. So I'm careful with my choices. <laughs> That's good. I mean, that's probably the best way to be in 2023, unfortunately. <laughs> for Do most you of see? Us, yeah. Back, if, yeah, forever. You just fucking spin kick your way through life and it fucking works for you. You know Dude, what I, mean? I could say some fucked up shit right now and maybe someone will clip it out and cancel me, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Like, <laughs> uh, do you see a future like of you coming back into the Atreyu fold or do you think that chapter is just dead uh, and done? I mean, if I, if I haven't painted enough picture to get like, Fuck, this is going to be it right here. I don't think, it, well, I know, Atreyu doesn't want me to come back, and I don't want mm -hmm. to come back. So it's those two things I think are preventing me. Unless there's something I'm missing. You know what I mean? Like, they don't want yeah. me there just as much as I don't want to be there. And it's just, it's done. It's a 20-year relationship, you know, 20-plus years, like, things end. You know? that That's yeah. done. I think if you were to, if you were to see me come back, uh, fuck, I'll say it now, it would just be about money. Like, for me, if yeah. I... You know, maybe to make some people happy. I want one thing that kind of sat weird with me. Ah, uh, you get me. Is like I never. <laughs> fuck. Like I gotta be careful with this one. I never. You're got good, to like, you're good. I never got to play like the last show. I never got to say goodbye. Yeah, no farewell. The people who not even like a farewell. Like it's about my ego. But it's like no. But seriously. I never got to lay it on the line and sweat mm -hmm. and scream with the people who who gave me a life, who bought my house, to say yeah. thank you to them. I'm not talking about the guys on stage. I'm talking about no, the yeah. people who bought the ticket to the Fans. show. I never got to do that for them. And I went out the last couple of records. I can't like, I, I won't let those be the end of my career. I won't let my musical career end with no final goodbye. And thank you to the people who let me have my life. Because yeah. as a musician, they let me have my life. Um, and, and I, I just couldn't let it, I, I didn't want it to end that way. You know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, like can't end that way, you know, uh, so yeah. I, I got a little, I got a little lost in myself there. No, no, you're good. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe in 2030, when we were young, we'll try to give you guys a big paycheck to come do a big reunion show or something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can yeah, see that you know, happen. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. It's funny that you bring that up. Um, yeah, you know, the reunion record things are kind of funny, are interesting to me, you know what I mean? Um, I did, I did, so yeah, I, anyone listening, when we were young, has a tray you on their big uh, album anniversary, or album uh in full like, when we were young is having all their artists do a full album show sets and they're doing and trey is playing and they're playing my curse right <laughs> yeah. and they're playing it without the definitive voice on the record <laughs> like it's pretty crazy and, and what's even more what's like what's what's uh, uh, you know i'm not so i'll just fucking put it out there um i don't yeah. think that should be happening and i could say that i can have feelings and opinions um and the reason i don't is that is my diary from mm -hmm. 20 something years, uh, 20 years ago. It's my personal thoughts and opinions on people I loved and people I hated in my life. It's mine. Every single fucking word on there is written by me. Not one word, not a the was put there by anybody else but me. So to me, it's, it was disappointing when I found out about that. Like somebody hit me up and was like, yeah. oh, you coming back? Like on my inbox, all these people are hitting me up. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then I go discover what, what people are talking about. And yeah, that's disappointing. That does that. It seems like a weird, like, like kind of like two paths, right? You know what I mean? Like we want to mm -hmm. the want to go in one direction, but for this, we'll go in this direction. And it's I don't. It feels weird to me. I'm sure there'll be like some back and forth, and this will be the thing from it. But it's like yeah, like I, I don't know, man. Uh, well, it'd be like if Escape oh. the Fate went out there and played that first Situations record. Uh, for their with the one with the with Ronnie Radke on it, like they're yeah. Escape the Fates playing, but they're doing the the War record with the first one with Craig Mabbitt, you know. So it's like, yeah, maybe I think I think maybe in my head, 
they, they got somebody like a cool big name screamer to come out and do it with them. Maybe mm. that would be an impactful yeah. cool. And, and then I would be like, I, I don't, that would be at least like make sense to me. I'm like, oh, they got Matt from Trivium to do it. Like, that's fucking, yeah, yeah, be cool. That's cool. And I might actually want to see that myself. I uh, will yeah. do it better than me. Um, but you know what I mean? I don't know if it's going to be that. And, and I, I, I just, I don't know, man. That record meant a lot to me. I'd love to see it honored. Um, yeah. And, and it's, you know, you know, I'm sure it's going to be performed better than ever, but I don't know. It's a miss for me. Uh, what can, can you think you go to the festival? <laughs> um, it's in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's pretty close to you, right? Yeah, it's three Not or four far. hours. I got, I got three kids. I'm yeah. making those sort of trips and things for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got, oh, I, feel I, I got to really be yeah. motivated, and I don't know if that's it. Now, if Matt from Trivium is doing it, I might go. I might go. Yeah, I might go <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> uh, so after, you know, all that went down you took some time away and kind of like reformed and like not just musically but like you know personally like you were saying like how was the like those i mean what it was about two years comic a hiatus from like creating music and just kind of being out there right yeah i think well in 2020 the beginning of 2020 everything ended right and then it was kind of like a back and forth of of weird stuff for the whole rest of the year mm -hmm. and i had my my, yeah. my daughter was born at the end of the year um and I like like emotionally like ah, like I don't I've never been a person who likes to discuss my own struggles with mental health. Um, I would much rather I feel much more comfortable supporting you or supporting somebody else. Right. Um, then like I think it's a dude thing though too. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I think, big, I think culturally, you know, we don't like to acknowledge uh, that there's there's a heavy load uh, on, on mm -hmm. men to perform um, and to to be of worth and to do these certain things. And I I feel like I kind of lost my my worth, you know, and, 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 and I questioned, uh, going forward, I was going to quit. I was just going to stop. I, I went to guitar school. I was, I was learning how to build guitars and Luther and all that stuff. And I, and I paint, I'll be a Luther. Yeah. Yeah. Luther. And then I, nice. I, I paint, I do all these other things and I'm like, I just don't have to, I don't have to do this. And I just can't stop. Like, yeah. like, like I'm a creator, not just of like art and guitars, but of music. And that's one of the paint, the, the mediums I work in. So I'm going to work crazy on this record. And then I'm going to go work crazy on like some other art project. Then I'm going to do mm -hmm. like art for this record. Then I'm going to write songs. Like I, I bounce around in all these, but I'm always constantly working and, and creating, even if it's just for myself. Um, and, and I need the music in my life. I need that form of, of expression. You know what I mean? Uh, and it was really, yeah. it, was, it was really hard for me um, without it. So we, I took, it took like a year before I could even kind of get on my feet to like try to, to focus and do things. And then there was just some behind this, like lots of behind the scenes stuff, trying to start a band, uh, in the pandemic was, is the, probably the worst, the yeah. worst thing ever. Right, that's tough. Um, so it was just like, it wasn't the time. It wasn't the right time. So these songs, what's crazy is the songs that people are hearing now, the singles that we've dedicated has been releasing are two years old. We wrote them two years ago. It took a year for them to come out. You're hearing them now, um, which is cool, but we've already grown. Like Gabe's grown as a producer and a songwriter mm -hmm. and a guitar player. Um, I, I, I've grown. I've been practicing and singing this whole time, those songs and working on other things. I sing other people's songs now, which is something I really didn't do too often. Spent a lot of time with my with some Metallica records. Um, and, and, and just like like, you know, finding the love finding the love for the craft yeah. you know what i mean i think that's a, a super important thing so do you feel like since you said these songs are like a little bit older like do you feel like they're almost like old news to you now like you're more excited about the new stuff or are you still like amped on the uh the songs that are coming I'm, out I'm, I'm super amped on this last one that's gonna come okay. out there's been some release scheduling stuff uh it'll come out sometime in january now it's called ad infernum it's my favorite song that I've written at this point and been a part of. It's the, it's the most vocally challenging for me like, nice. period that I've ever done uh, in, in both screaming and singing. Like it just, it taxes me this song. Yeah. Um, and I love that. I love the challenge and it's very dynamic. I think one thing that I loved about being in a tree was there was a dynamic and juxtaposition of screaming and singing. And sometimes the singing part would be saying the fucked up stuff. And sometimes the screaming stuff would be the more beautiful line. It just, however, mm. and, and I like to be able to create and do that stuff in music. So Dedicris is, is, is like full bore exploring all this sort of dynamic shit that I think this last song at Infernum does, whether it's just like raging, super heavy to yeah. like more melodic. It's not emo. There's nothing, there's nothing but moody vibey shit, like tense, moody, dark, oh, vibey cool. shit. 
Um, there's a lot going on. I think it's it's going to be more surprising. I'm taking chances. I'm not coming out giving you 30 to 40 minutes of one type of scream. If anybody thought that mm-hmm. was going to be it, it's not. There's going to be like 60 types of screams and a whole <laughs> bunch of other shit. Um, we're gonna, my wife is going to sing on this record. It's not something oh, nice. I ever. This sounds weird. Like I ever thought I'd be stoked on, but I like to keep my 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 family separate uh, in a way, mm-hmm. just because it's a special thing. And people are ruthless on the internet and in the world. And like, I don't need to have to track down somebody who said something mean about my wife. Now someone's going to say meet something mean about my wife in the comments below, and I'm going to have to right. go to the house and fuck murder. <laughs> um, but. No, I feel um, that's why it's the same way. I don't really post very many photos of my my kid on like Instagram and stuff like that. Like I don't need that negativity. Yeah. Like, Dude, you gotta you gotta watch it, right? So, but but I was hearing parts in my head like a female vocal and stuff, and that's something we never. I don't think we did in a tray. Even if we did, it was real small. So there's some parts on this that are gonna have cool f- female vocals. I'm not sure in my head yet where they're gonna be. If they're gonna be like mm-hmm. a lead part or mixed in. I, I think we're gonna have a range of everything. So it's just it's this this expression and creativity. I don't want this. I don't. I want people to get what they think and want from yeah. this, and then a little, damn, bam, a little bit of that fucking splash on the top of what the yeah. fuck, you know? Because if not, what's Hell the yeah. point? Like, what's the point? You know, like, uh, fuck, what's the point? I've done it. I've done X, Y, Z, and I want to do all of it. You know. I love the um, like the old school kind of like monster cartoon vibe to the whole project as well. <laughs> hey, like, man, what you. kind of inspired that? Like, I love it. Just reminds me of, like those mummy and like the creature from the Black Lagoon kind of stuff yeah, from back yeah, in the day. Sure. Like, it's a, they're a mix between um, like 1940s, 50 pulp cover art, and then mm-hmm. I colored them with a mix of like uh, you know, and procreate like fake painting. I guess I would call yeah. it, and then um, and then CMYK like a dot patterns and lines which is more okay. of a mixture. that wouldn't traditionally be used on a pulp cover i'm a nerd here that would traditionally be <laughs> like from the comic inferior in the comic book world that's how they colored stuff back in the day so mm. i kind of mixed the two together i created all those man it was super fun it took a lot of time yeah. i aged them all um yeah it was super rad i think i think i'm gonna take on the next i'm gonna take on the album cover for the the lp2 um i already have it worked out what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do oil painting oh, yeah. which is rad because I, I suck at oil painting so it's be, <laughs> it, luckily i can do it digitally now um yeah and I can. you'd be like oh oh trash bop, 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 bop. like two finger the fuck my myself back out of that situation <laughs> and then like fix it yeah. you know what i mean um but yeah it's 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 exciting it's all about it's having my hand in every sort of aspect of it as long as it doesn't look like shit you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> as, even if it just looks okay right now at the beginning, yeah. I'm okay with it because that's honest, genuine, and real. That's what like I saw in my head, and that's the closest I could get to mm-hmm. whatever it is. And I think there's there's something cool to that. I don't know, like you know, I wish more singers would do that. Even if it was shitty, even if it was just like an expressionist abstract color painting that like James did for Metallica. Be fucking yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting to see? Like, what does a abstract change? You see have? the other side of it, yeah. Because you get you're already getting like the art in the music form from the artist, yeah. but yeah, to see like the other side of it, is, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that does I think, the uh, does the dead Icarus name does that come from something like comic book related, or is there something you thought sounded cool? Well, I'm I'm Greek, so I was in it like inundated with Greek mythology more than I think uh, like Christian uh, biblical yeah. stuff. So it's a lot uh, more fun, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we, we, well, some Bible Bible stories are fucking nuts, dude. There's well, like, yeah, something get pretty nice. <laughs> and all that stuff it gets a little wild. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Greek stories, you know, the Greek stories like to party too, and the, the parable of Icarus, you know, flying too close to the sun, reaching mm-hmm. past what he needed to, and dying, um, and suffering for it. I, I I found a parallel to that. I felt I could relate to it. And then me being Greek, I it was the first. Honestly, it was like the first name I came up with. Sometimes like shit just comes in your head. And you got to go with it. And I was like, dude, it's going to yeah. be Icarus. You know, there wasn't even like a second. I don't have, I didn't have a second or third name. I was like, yeah, that's it. I hope people. Did you consider just going on your, your own name? Or did you think the last name was too hard to pronounce? It was you know, I, never, people I, never, up? <laughs> thought, I never thought about it. And I don't see yeah. myself as like with like a following to where people mm. would be like, oh shit, Varkasas. Like, what the fuck is that? They're just like, they just see a bunch of syllables and what, what think I'm like, <laughs> is this like a Russian right. brand? Is this, right. of, is this a Polish sausage? <laughs> Like, yeah. why is he singing in english i wasn't expecting this yeah yeah <laughs> so so yeah i never i never thought and it's not about that like like to me it's not these songs aren't 
just a platform for my vocals. It's a, mm -hmm. it's, this is a band with awesome music. There's awesome drumming. Brandon, Brandon Zaki from Enterprise Earth plays drums. He's in Whitechapel too, right? He's a, he is the best drummer I've ever worked with. And one of the best drummers I've probably ever been around in my life. And I've been around a lot of drummers. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been around a lot of backstages. Um, he's up there, dude. Within the next couple of years, uh, he will be even more sought. I'm, I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get to play that many shows with Brandon. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I hope I do. Your time is limited. I, dude, absolutely. I'm, I don't know. I don't have any insider information, but like to me, yeah. he's the kind of guy that if Slipknot came out and was like, yo, our new drummer is this dude. I'm um, again, this is yeah. just like speculation bullshit. You would be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like, no, God damn, how cool would that be if that happened? And you, <laughs> you said that on the podcast. I would probably <laughs> like, get somehow, I would get in trouble. And I would right. to, I'd be like, oh shit, I didn't mean to say that. I can't. Yeah. But, but that would make sense to me. You know what I mean? Because he's, yeah. he's he's that level to me. And and then I don't want to leave like Gabe out either. Like Gabe's a fucking genius. Gabe mm -hmm. is the dark riff overlord. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's not, not, I don't mean just riffs and dark riffs. Like Gabe, Gabe can write a, a multitude of things that are, that sound heartfelt and awesome. And I think that's yeah. the talented composer. So it, I'm, I'm I'm super stoked. He, when we first started working together, he's like, so do you want like solos and stuff on this? And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like this is, this is, yeah. we're a fucking metal band. Like we have solos. Yeah, you gotta have, yeah, you know I love I mean? all the pinch harmonics. Like, I don't know. You know, if that's, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, cause we're, no, we're still like talking it. about the, when the first stage is where I'm like, yo, you know, mm -hmm. Pantera meets Kill Switch Engage. Let's do that. Let's yeah. see what that falls, you know? Um, and yeah, when I heard I, the first track, I think it was when I heard the uh, the pinch harmonic with the the first one, the song, I'm like, oh, there it is, hell yeah, all right, we're, we got riffs here, baby, like yeah. yeah. And there's dude, there's so many moments on the on the mm -hmm. full length coming up. Like I'm laughing, and it's yeah. just like, like, ah, fuck, like everybody wants to go hype their stuff, and everybody's like, this is the fucking best yeah. thing ever. But it's like, yo, I've been out of the game for a while. The, my last stuff wasn't exactly popping off and killing it. You didn't hear me say enthusiastic things about it. If you go back and look at four, uh, other interviews, like I'm talking about yeah. this now, um, this is a this will be a, a contender for next year. Like unless oh, yeah. I just shit the bed vocally and then whatever. <laughs> like, but I've already pre yeah. and demoed out all my stuff, which is cool. Like a tray, you we would go real quick. So I just don't want to fucking go back and all this. But when a tray writes a song with Feldman, you go in and you just sit there and you write and record a song. Bam, 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 bam. What's the chorus? Boom. Here we go. We built a song. That's it. Mm -hmm. And and this is totally different. Like Gabe sends me like a riff, a verse, and a chorus, kind of like piece together. And I go, okay, this is sick. If I have a thought, I send it back to him, and then I start to write right away to that i write a, a chorus melody at least if not lyrics i get the vibe for what the song is going to be about like what it makes me feel and i write yeah. the verse then he comes back with everything and i go okay sick then he sends me like the fully demoed out what it's gonna be and i put those vocals that i have back in and then i redo everything like i redo i, I do it all like in a screaming voice i do everything in a sung multiple types of screaming and sung voices and then i just kind of like cut and paste um in logic because I, I i i'm not very good at this stuff like i don't know how to tune vocals i feel bad for gabe with some of the stuff he gets <laughs> um but i just cut and paste and i and i yeah. go okay like this vocal is going to sound so i get a, a cut and paste sketch of what i'm going to do and then i go re-sing it like as a real human and not yeah. computer mumbo jumbo re um and it's it's so rad it's it's such a good way to like sound out and hear what you're doing so i already know what all these songs are going to sound like at the end and i know that once gabe gets a hold of them and really does like i don't know how to eq a microphone you think i would i don't know how to eq a microphone for shit it's a whole like, other animal yeah dude like and or the different type of verb and saturation mm -hmm. that needs to be used on me for a, for my type of voice when i'm clean singing versus what needs mm -hmm. to be happening when i scream a certain way versus a different scream i do which uses different frequencies <laughs> Like that's yeah, all, yeah. Bro, you know, but I can, my, <laughs> like I get him fully produced ideas. Like there's multiple tracks, like there's backing tracks. There's me, like I said, I'm doing choir chants. I send him everything I, I hear and then we, we put it all together and create it. So I already know that this, this will check off all the boxes for the people like, man, I wish you were screaming. I miss hearing you do this, this sort of music. It's going to hit all those boxes, but it's still going to vibe. It's still going to have a dynamic to it that's not just 100 percent face shredding that fucking high tempo you know what i mean like there's a there's yeah. a flow to this this is 
there, there, there's more to this. We don't, and we don't have super long wanky songs either. Our longest song, mm-hmm. I think, on the full length is maybe five and a half minutes or something like that. And that, but the most of them are are four and under. You know, um, we're 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 attacking with purpose. These are, yeah. I, I can't. You're not just out there noodling. <laughs> yeah, like there's there's no noodling. There is a fucking emotional riffage. But there's yeah. no noodling. There's definitely some emotional <laughs> riffage and stuff. There's some super cool. Like I loved AFI. Um, I still love. Oh that, yeah. But, but the the formative AFI records to me are like honestly everything before the major label stuff, which I still like. Yeah. I'm not even going to talk shit. I loved all that stuff too. But but when I grew up and voc- being a vocalist, which sucks because I can't sing or I don't sound anything like Davey, you know. But on this record, I realized like I, can, I like there's vibes where I hear his voice and I like in these weird like interlude things that Grave and I have created. So I get the mm-hmm. opportunity to like create in this space that I never would have got to in a trade that I would never get to musically. I just get to command the ship now. There's no like, oh, this doesn't sound like Dead Icarus. It's like it sounds whatever it could be whatever we want. Yeah, because this is open ended. Yeah. And I think it does check a lot of boxes for people who miss the old Atreyu sound, but then also it does give them, like you said, it's something fresh. It's not just like you're rehashing my curse or anything like that. You know, it's you're no. you're giving them something new. So. I think about, like when when people first heard this, and and these the songs, the first four songs do sound a little different than what when how things have progressed mm-hmm. now. Um, there there was like a couple comments, and they were positive, like mostly all positive, which I'm I'm super stoked on. You get you usually get a lot of bullshit too. Um, yeah, but it's just like this is awesome. And it kind of, it's kind of like a two thousands metalcore feel to it. And I think that has a lot to do with my, my voice and vocal style of scream definitely sounds, I don't want to say dated, but like it comes from a certain time, right? Because a lot Whoa. of people were into that shit then. So they yeah. associate that sound to it. Yeah. I think they just hear your voice and they automatically, <laughs> their brain are just like reforms back to the two thousands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, that, and that's cool. Like, so I like, when I talked to when Gabe and I were conceptualizing things for this record, it's like, how do we honor that? And how do we like mm-hmm. that? That is, that is who I am. That's where I'm from. That's how you know me. That's the only reason you're listening or talking to me. Um, right. How do we honor that? But then, then still give you something more. I don't, I'm always like, Gabe, I want it to sound more modern, but indirectly I kind of said like, so I've seen people talk mm-hmm. about it and I see like this, this, this comes up and I don't want to end up just here. I don't want to end up just as like, this is like 2000, because that's going to be cool for like one or two records. And then I'll personally lose interest. This, right. has to, this has to keep evolving. Bro, there's a part on this that sounds like Tool. There's stuff on this that sounds like a fucking raging, like heavy, not like lame, rappy, new metal. Um, we're covering all the metals in one record. Yeah. All of them. You can get all the metals one place right here. Well, that's good too, because at, at a certain point, you have to stop being former Treyu vocalist Alex and you had to be dead Icarus vocalist Alex, you know, like up, you, the, the only reason I even I rely on that now is just because this is so unknown and I don't have, of any, course, yeah. I don't have any support coming from the previous band. So the only way people I, know about me is through um, like t- tagging or, or putting that in things, you know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like I, I kind of may have earned a little right to do that. So I, it would annoy me if you didn't. I hate when singers try to act like they weren't. <laughs> and yeah. just like, come on. Like, people loved your old band. We want to talk about that and your new stuff, too. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, uh, how do how do I honor that? You know, how, yeah. how do I mm-hmm. honor that? You know, and, and also do, you know, do more. And, and, and so it's cool, man. I think... Uh, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I think this record is gonna it's gonna turn some heads because I, I don't think like right now nobody like we're kind of like in the what's the entry level stage where people just start to find right. out stuff you know um, and so it's a it's a cool exciting it's cool exciting time to like you know have somebody shoot me a message it's like yo I just heard this for the right time because I try to respond I respond to people all on YouTube I respond to everybody on Instagram um, I'm not above that you know what I mean like 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 you you took the time to write something about my new song whether it's good or bad right. i'm gonna if i can even if i'm taking a shit maybe i'm all right back yeah to you. you know what i mean careful you know, though, like man I, you, you get dragged into some negativity bullshit that way too though <laughs> spent too oh, long man. in those comment sections hey, dude, it's, you know what and that's that's what has been yeah the, I, i'm not an industry darling i don't feel support from the industry at all about dead icarus no hardly anybody in any band that i know has been whoa whoa dude have you checked out Alex's sing yeah nobody and that's cool with me because and i say this honestly and genuinely all the, i'm the, i feel like the fucking people's champ in a way like in all the oh, comments yeah. both on the, the previous bands and minds 
It's mm-hmm. mostly people who are enjoying what I do and like this. Yeah. You know, there's a couple who are like, no, nah, pass. And I, I, I respond back and I give a thumbs up. I'm like, all right, cool. All right. Yeah. You know, whatever. Like, you, you can can't please it. everybody. I've been around. I've heard it all. Doesn't yeah. matter to me. What matters to me is is finding the people that that like this and it matters to mm-hmm. and getting this in their ears. Because because I think it's important music that needs to be heard and I, I want them to hear it. I want them to enjoy it. I got to spend a lot of time on the lyrics. I got to like fuck music is becoming so fast and replaceable. Um, yeah. You know, let, I wanted to spend just time on stuff, even if it's frivolous, you know, I spent so long on these demos, man. I haven't seen, I, I'm hanging out with my family for the past couple weeks. Cause I'm in here just re- redoing stuff, but not even on the record. That's, you yeah. know, it's just to get it right. And I think that like, like I think about Matt from Avenged Sevenfold. I, I saw that dude. I haven't seen him in years and fate put him in front of me at my kids. Um, travel ball basketball game like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I haven't seen Matt five or six years. I look up on my. Oh, your kids like played each other or something? No, no, no. But uh, <laughs> they play, in, they play uh, in a competitive travel ball like league. So every weekend there's tournaments. Oh, okay. Kids from different cities come. So they're in the same age bracket, I think, in the nine ten U team. And so they didn't play. They would have played eventually, but like they, yeah. they didn't match up in the brackets. Um, Still cool though. You guys are the same spot. <laughs> that's cool one, like like Matt and I have known each other for the fuck. As long as almost as long as I, I've known everybody in Atreyu, as long as I've been in Atreyu, I think I've known Matt almost. Um, and like we talked about, like just obsessing over stuff. And I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys know this, and I and, and I hope this only comes out as complimentary because it only is. Matt, Matt is obsessed with giving you like the best that he can, and what I, I and he hears in his head, and whether that sometimes people interpret that as like. He, he, uh, taking things too far or like, Oh, like you're spending yeah. way too much time on this or you're being a perfectionist or whatever. Like, like that's what I want to do now. And so like, I think like he's, uh, it, it, he's pretty successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's, yeah, successful, he's right. <laughs> and he's not successful because he's trying to do what he thinks people want to hear at all. Right. He's just doing what he wants to hear and he's spending a lot of time on it. It doesn't seem like he just, but you know, yeah. all right, guys, let's, let's get this I one mean, out. You know, they definitely did not give go out and try to give people what they thought people wanted to hear on the new record. That's for sure. They did what they wanted to do. And, you know, it worked for them. All the yeah. seven fold balls. <laughs> um, but that's what they've done every single time. Yeah. Every single time. It's like you get a little bit of it, but then you get what they want mm-hmm. because it's their goddamn band. Yeah. Um, At the end of the day, yeah, they're going to do what they want. Yeah, I think it's great. I think they've been able to, like, grow and evolve and dip into all these different things, but still be Avenged Sevenfold. You know what I yeah. mean? There might not be as much screaming, but it's like there hasn't been that much screaming in Avenged Sevenfold in fucking decades. Like, what are you talking right. about? You know what I mean? You're living in the yeah, past. Yeah, it's been a while. So I just, to, to zero back in, I look at his focus and stuff. And so, like, I saw him, you know, at this tournament, and we got to talking about that. And it really lit a fire in me more to even be more critical of, like, a- everything that I'm doing. Um but in a way that's true to me. I'm not making these songs. Mm-hmm. I'm like, gosh, I hope you like this. I hope Octane yeah. or I hope the mainstream or I hope Liquid Metal, I hope whoever likes it. Just I'm just creating these things that are honest and genuine with the hopes that people like it, but not to get people to like it. And I think that yeah. that's a powerful difference. And I think when people, the most successful bands right now, I can clearly see are doing what I just mentioned. They're obsessing about something that's really important to them rather than just trying to create something that they, oh, I think this is going to do well. It's like, no, nah, man, you got to shoot from the heart and then you still got to find a way to give the fan what they want, you know, and that's that's the struggle. And for me, it doesn't feel like one right now. Like 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 I said, the the, the outflowing of, of positive stuff. I haven't deleted a mm-hmm. single comment. It's a lie. There's actually been several. <laughs> And the reason I deleted them is because of the words that were used in reference to oh, dudes fair. in my band. In, in, yeah. well, not my band, but in former train members. However I may feel, there's certain types of hate speech or belittling. Yeah. That's not appropriate. You know, you can have an opinion. You think they did X, Y, Z. Fine. Write it on the internet. I don't care. <clears throat> but if you, you're going to, like, attack someone in a disgusting way, then, like, I delete comments. You know, no one's saying any, any of that shit about me either. You know what I mean? If someone's like... You're, you're like someone on this record would maybe like um, the vocals aren't mixed right. They don't sound as good. They're too low, whatever. It's like, okay, cool. Thank you for that. Because that yeah. person took, they wanted to hear it, dude. 
And they sat there and listened to it. Maybe they listened to it on their phone. I don't know. Maybe they listened to it on a thousand dollar speaker. And to them, it sounded weird. And they they mm -hmm. they wanted to fucking write that. Cool. I'll acknowledge that. You know what I mean? I don't have to delete it. It doesn't make it doesn't make it true just because they write it. You know right. what I mean? And so many people, I think a lot of dudes in bands, they think it's true. Just so somebody writes it and gets affects them. It's like fuck all that, man. You just got to be you. You know what I mean? You just have to be unapologetically you. And I think that's been my my like my takeaway from everything. And I urge everyone to be is unapologetically you. It's going to get you into trouble sometimes. But if you're honest and it comes from a good place, uh, you know what I mean? Just be you, man. Even if I, it's I love that mindset, dude. Yeah, I love that the idea of that that kind of mantra. I I I 100 percent support that. And you, I, I tried to. I mean, be, I was excited I, to hear the new. What's that? I tried to be a badass for years. I tried to be like I didn't yeah. care. Enough. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody thinks. I care very deeply what people think. I'm an emotional guy. You know, yeah. I, but I learned to admit it. I learned to squash it out. I care who people I res what people I respect. People I don't mm -hmm. respect, and I don't care what they think. You know what I mean? But I put up this facade of toughness, and I train. I do things like I train martial arts, and I work out all the time. And maybe that's maybe I even perceive that as making me tough, and that's not. That's not what toughness is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Toughness is is getting the fucking oranges up the stairs just because that's you have to the feeling inside no matter what happens that the skin's coming off your feet on the days that you like it and on the days that you hate it you still put one foot in front of the other and go forward that's toughness and i lost that shit i lost it for a yeah. while even when i was still in the band i became apathetic and i accepted where i was well i'm just going to be this and this band and that's going to be my role and that, that and that's a kiss of death it's a kiss of death in business not oh, yeah way. getting so, complacent and yeah dude it's no it, good. It, 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 it almost ruined my life. I'm so lucky that when shit hit the fan, I had trained jujitsu 15 years ago. I went back and started training that. And I'm not saying it's jujitsu for everybody. It can be something else, you know? And But, but, but mm -hmm. jujitsu like puts me in a negative position every time I train. I have to fight through adversity. Some days, no matter how hard I fight, using my mind, body, soul, and more strength than I probably should, I'll fucking lose despite my yeah. efforts. Most men, most people can't deal with that. It fucking eats at you. You lost. It's gotta be humbling. Fuck it. Right? It just teaches you who you are. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck, I lost. Am I the type of guy who accepts that? Or am I the type of guy who learns from it and comes back better? Well, I want my son to be. And I want my son to be the guy who accepts it and learns and comes back better. It doesn't come back damaged Whoa. and fucked up and weird. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people are too afraid to lose if they don't even try, you know, and I think that, yeah. you know, adversity and like, you know, every time you lose something or you, or you go up against something and it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, if you can think of like, all right, what did I learn from this? Like, what can I take away from this? Like, anytime something shitty happens to me, I know it sounds cliche, but anytime something shitty happens to me, I'm always like, I just think in my head, I'm like, well, I'm not going to let that happen again. Like, I'm not going to do that again. Like, I'm not going to go down that road again. Like, I learned something at least out of this, you know? It, dude, it's I so mean, if you're listening, life is teaching you all the time, but you mm -hmm. don't want to hear sometimes. So you ignore it or you yeah, fuck that. I'm not going to hear the negative things about myself or I won't accept my responsibility for this failure or that. You'll never progress, yeah. you'll never grow. And that's, that's not we, how we as a society or we as people are going to go anywhere. And that's not how a leader acts, right? Like a leader, right. Is like, well, it was the other guy on my team's fault. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. That works. Well, you know, when people were bummed out, uh, um, you know, for a trade changing sounds, that's my fault. When people are bummed out about uh, the medical comment, uh, that's my fault. I, I take uh, accountable. The, yeah. the the last few years in the band, the way that I, I was at, like acted and felt and was depressed and fucking weird, like that's all on me. It's not on other people. It's on, it's yeah. on me. And when you when you start to like own your stuff, man. It changes it changes your perspective it changes how you handle business you know what i mean i love it dude and i'm excited i was excited to hear the record before this conversation but now like you know just hearing like the, the your outlook and your positivity like it's just got me even more pumped to hear the new tunes man i can't wait to give it a spin when it comes out well hopefully i can hear it early maybe i can get some advanced listen yeah yeah for sure for sure uh i do gotta start wrapping things up here unfortunately but i want to end this on one Last fireball question. I'm gonna try not to get you in trouble here or anything. No, please do. But uh, <laughs> what do you think is the greatest metalcore song of all time? Oh, it could be just the first it, one that comes to mind. Maybe it's either oh fuck, is it Juggernaut by Caven? It's either Juggernaut or Moral Clips 
by Caven. Uh, definitely a Caven song, though. <laughs> it's definitely a Caven song, without a doubt. And I think I want to say Moro Eclipse, but I think it's Juggernaut. Juggernaut is my is my favorite one, I think, by Caven. But they played like Moro Eclipse the other day on 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 Liquid Metal, and I, I yeah. fucking lost my mind. I'm like, what the Hell fuck? Yeah. I was so uh, you know because that's not and that track too isn't one. I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah, stoked. yeah, I, I love Caven. I'm not I love how quickly you answer that because I ask these questions sometimes in like different genres, different bands, and whatnot. But like usually people hem haul, but you were like, Caven, <laughs> no, definitely. There's so, dude, that uh, until your heart stops, everybody out there, go listen to Caven until Everyone. your heart stops and tell me you don't hear something from your favorite metalcore band in there, even if they didn't knowingly like use Caven as a reference point. It's there. Yeah. Great record. It's, they got the reference whether they knew it or not. <laughs> uh alex where can everyone uh connect like where's the best place to connect with you and keep up with what you're doing the, the easiest is on the socials at dead icarus music and at alex varkatsas i'm um, on ig and then uh youtube you know dead icarus music we've got it we're on the spotify's you know you gotta go Ooh, to you got on spotify how'd you pull that we, off we we know some people <laughs> we know some people they yeah. put up a song for us as a favor um we're very <laughs> grateful so yeah no man we're obviously we're on spotify we're on itunes we're on all those but yeah at dead Icarus music and at alex Varkatsas for annoying amounts of stuff about this band hell yeah and i have been your charismatic host jesse lee i appreciate you guys watching listening please subscribe share this with somebody that has good taste all right take it easy now and uh bye-bye